When you're arguing a point using logic, you establish premises to support a conclusion. But many times, your conclusion doesn't actually follow from your line of reasoning, no matter how much you or your opponent are convinced by your argument. In that case, you may be relying on a fallacy to persuade yourself and your opponent. This word fallacy sounds charged and can certainly get tossed from side to side in heated debates, but in logic a fallacy is merely a descriptive term and says nothing about how dumb you are nor about whether or not there exists some real way to support the same conclusion. Let me show you how it works. I made an argument in the previous video demonstrating that coffee isn't a beverage but a food. In this argument, I relied on two distinct meanings of the word coffee and two different meanings of the word beans in my premises. I was intentionally vague and used compact language to hide these choices. This simple language makes the argument much more convincing than if I disclose the intended meaning of these words. The result? The conclusion looks like it follows from the premises, but it's really not supported by them. The conclusion may or may not be true, but it's uncalled for here. This reliance on the psychological persuasiveness of a statement is a hallmark feature of informal fallacies which are informal because the truthfulness of the conclusion's content can't be derived from the truthfulness of the content of the premises. Still, the argument's form may be perfectly valid, like my food is coffee syllogism. Here are some examples of informal fallacies. And the list goes on. In all cases, informal fallacies rely on content that does something other than support the conclusion in order to get you to accept the conclusion. You can get a feel for how the logic of the supporting line of reasoning actually runs if you just remove the fallacious statement, like this. Not so reasonable now, is it? Recall that arguments don't just have content, they also have form. We called an argument with well-structured premises and a conclusion valid, so it may not surprise you to hear of formal fallacies, which arise when we shape the argument in a way that the conclusion doesn't follow from the premises, but people can still be persuaded by the conclusion because it seems to follow. Let's play around with a few arguments to see if you can spot weaknesses in their form, in their structure. First, a refresher, a basic syllogism. A is B, B is C, so A is C. Fill it in as you like, we've seen that this form works. Next, a second point of reference, and an even simpler argument. If P, then Q. P, therefore Q. This is a basic reasoning strategy, and it works. What about this one? A is not B, B is not C, therefore A is C. Think about it for a moment, and check against other examples if you need to. The first premise only supports that A is not B, so anything we say about B in the second premise can't apply to A, positively or negatively. The conclusion doesn't follow. This next one runs aground on the same issue as the last. A is not B, so no matter what we say about B, it doesn't apply to A. What's wrong here? I've negated P in this conditional statement, then assume that Q must also be negated but perhaps Q is conditioned on something else. Spot the problem here yet? No? Look closer. Keep looking, because you won't find it. This one's good, and I leave it to you and your clever ways to figure out why. One more for you. Can I argue that what follows from a conditional implies what precedes? Consider this form carefully. A implies B only states that if A holds, B also holds. It does not mean that B always follows from A. Come on, you remember your logical biconditionals, right? That's all for fallacies. Well, for this introduction to fallacies, I'm sure you'll encounter plenty more. These last two topics introduced arguments and fallacies, and I'll add them to my playlist for the intro to logic if you're visiting the YouTube channel and to the lesson page on nativelang.com. 
I hope you've enjoyed a bit more logic, and thanks for learning with me.